What up, fam? Today we accessorize for all you spell slingers out there with this badass potion holster. Stay tuned. So today I'm going to be making a belt holster for this really cool round bottle I have. To make it, I cut these strips of leather, 3 quarter inch wide, and about 3 feet long. Though these are probably going to vary depending on the size of your bottle. Just make the width whatever looks right compared to the container that you're trying to hold. To start, take one of your leather strips and fold about an inch and a half at the end over. Then position that bite right where you want it on the neck of the bottle. My bottle has this little lip that I can use as a reference point. Now pass your leather strip around the bottle, pinching it so that it falls evenly directly on the other side of the bottle from the loop that you made. Make a mark even with the loop on the other side and bend your leather at that mark. Then give yourself about an inch and a half to work with and cut off the remainder of the leather. This should let your leather strap wrap evenly around the bottle with both ends in a loop. Now take your other strip of leather and fold one end in on itself just as you did earlier. Then line that end up in the same position on the neck of the bottle. On the other side, form a belt loop as large as you think you're gonna need it. For reference, my loop here is about four inches tall. Now just give yourself about an inch and a half extra and cut off all the excess material. Now just to keep everything looking clean, I sketched in some rough points on the ends and then cut them in with my razor knife. I also rounded off all the edges as I went just because I thought it looked cleaner. I also went around each strap with my edge beveler just to knock down all those sharp corners. Once that was looking good, I hit all the edges with a damp sponge, then busted out my slicker to start getting everything looking nice and smooth. The friction caused by this tool lays down all the rough ends of the leather and makes the whole piece look a lot more smooth and professional. For example, here's an area that I already went over with the slicker brush compared to an area that I hadn't hit yet. See the difference? So once I was happy that everything was looking smooth and sexy, it was time to get to dyeing the leather. Make sure you lay some plastic down and wear some gloves because this stuff will stain everything. Now for this build, I've decided to use a nice ox blood red. I just add it to a clean cotton rag and apply it as evenly as possible across the whole surface of my straps. And once I was done with that, I decided I wanted the back of the piece to be this USMC black. You can obviously do whatever color combination or style you like, I just thought this would look cool. And once I was happy with the dye job on both sides, I decided to add some of this leather balm with atom wax. This stuff is specifically designed to condition and soften leathers, but I really like how it seems to even out every dye job I do. It also adds a really pretty shine to the whole piece. Finally, I'm choosing to burnish the edges with some of this beeswax. I just rub it all along the edge and then go back over it with my slicker again. This is just gonna help make sure everything is nice and sealed up, as well as give it a professional smooth looking finish. With that looking good, it's time to put this thing together. I start by putting the shorter strap in place with both ends folded in so that they are even with each other. Then I make a mark with my pencil about an inch down from the top. Now I punch a hole at that mark through both the top layer and the bottom layer underneath. Once this is done on both sides, it's time to add our rivets. For this project, I'm gonna be using rapid rivets. They just consist of a small post and a cap that slides on the top of it that locks into place when hammered. I simply put the post into position in one of the holes that I punched and then push the cap into place. Now using the recommended anvil and striker that go with these rapid rivets, I give them a few quick hits to lock it into place, leaving me with this open loop to pass my cord through. Then I just follow suit and do the same thing on the other side. With that strap taken care of, I pull up the long strap and lock in the same kind of loop on one side. Then I wrap it around my bottle just to make sure I'm positioning my belt loop exactly where I need it. To keep everything looking good, I made sure the same amount of leather was tucked underneath on both sides. Then I marked where my rivet needed to go and got to locking it into place. Now I'm gonna wanna add one more rivet about an inch up from that last one. By doing that, I'm going to end up making a little empty space here that I can use to pass my cord through. Now I'm going to put my straps in a position, making sure they crisscross the bottle and that all the tops end up even with each other. Once everything looks right, I move the bottle out of the way and punch a hole right through the middle of where both straps cross, then lock them together with a rivet. To hold the whole thing together, I have this nice black leather cordage. I simply sit the bottle in place and thread the cordage through all of the loops that I've made in the leather. Then tie it up, locking my bottle into place. And at this point, we're done. You have yourself one fancy leather potion holder. 
but I'm not going for fancy, I'm going for badass. To accomplish this, I'm gonna add in these little metal spots. These are just little metal studs with two sharpened legs underneath. So with the bottle in place, I use a sharp stylus to make marks evenly around the bottle where I want the spots to go. Now using those indentations as a guide, I use the little sharp feet on the bottom of those spots to make marks where I need holes to go. Then I punch those holes with an awl. Now I simply push those little legs through the holes so that they protrude out on the other side. Then, just like a staple, I fold them over, locking them into place. Giving them a few pounds with your mallet will help make sure everything stays nice and flat. And there you have it! Whether you are a frontline war mage or a back-end healer, you are gonna look styling out there on the battlefield. Just stay safe out there, keep track of your mana, and as always, keep leveling up, you.